Hey, yeah, it's Snacks, and this is part two of my MSI booth coverage over here at CES. So there's over two dozen GPUs in all, and you might be thinking, holy crap, that's a lot of GPUs. But I'm going to break it down so it makes sense if you're not familiar. There's five main platforms, and each one has its own cooler and shroud and style. And within the shroud will be a card from a 5070 all the way up to a 5090. Starting with the entry level cards is the Inspire line and in that lineup you can get a 5070, a 5070 Ti, or a 5080. Above the Inspire we have the Ventus line. The Ventus also goes from a 5070 all the way up to a 59th card. Just like the platform right above it, the Gaming Trio line. Above the Gaming Trio line is the brand new Vanguard lineup. And at the top sits the Supreme lineup, which comes in both air-cooled as well as liquid-cooled options. So now let's take a closer look at each card, starting with the Inspire graphics cards. So here we have the Inspire graphics cards. These are the entry-level cards for MSI, and you see that nice, clean, angular look. These have the Storm Force fans. It has a satin finish in a champagne gold color. And one thing that sticks out to me is how compact it is. So if you like those smaller form factor builds, you'll appreciate the size of this card. It's a three fan card, but it seems to be slightly shorter than all the other cards here. And it's also thinner than all the other ones too. Of course, there's going to be a trade off in cooling, but that's going to be expected with thinner shrouds and fins. This card also takes up two and a half slots. And I did notice that there are a lot more two and a half slots compared to three and three and a half slot cards that most of the 40 series cards had. Now each platform, whether there's a 5070 or a 5080 or 5070 Ti, will look pretty much the same from the outside in terms of aesthetics. By the way, all of the MSI's 50 series cards have HDMI 2.1B, but some have DisplayPort version 2.1A and some 2.1B. In the case of these Inspire cards here, all of them will have DisplayPort versions 2.1a. Next, we have the Ventus lineup, which is a step up. These also take up two and a half slots, but the cooler overall is a little bit thicker than the Inspire cards. However, similar to the Inspire cards, it will fit in smaller form factor builds a lot easier than other cards. As for the design, you can see that unlike the Inspire, which has a completely flat shroud, the Ventus has little ridges around the fan. And these have a black and silver color plus one other color, which we'll get to in a second. There's also these different fans. These are called Torx 5.0 fans. And also one thing to note is that the Ventus lineup is the only one that has that 240 looking to fan cooler. So if you guys like those two fan style, the Ventus is the way to go. And if you like white and that two fan configuration, you're in luck because we have that right here. Like the Inspire cards, all the Ventus cards have DisplayPort version 2.1a, but there is one version that has DisplayPort version 2.1b, and that's the plus version of the 5080 16GB Ventus 3X OC. By the way, the main difference between a 2.1A and a 2.1B port is that with a 2.1B, you could run longer cables without losing signal. Yeah, look at the 5090 version. I mean, you can see that it's no noticeably thicker than the 5070. One level up are the Gaming Trio cards. So these are thicker with better cooling, but with that extra cooling, you get a larger form factor. So you can see here, you also get some RGB that runs on the 1 and 7 o'clock positions of the middle fans. And like the Inspire cards, these use Storm Force fans with the difference being textured blades at the end of the fans. You can also get the gaming trio versions and that clean white as well for the 5080 and 5070. You might have noticed that white has become super popular and difficult to find, but they did tell me that the production number for white colors will be increased in the 50 series. So we'll see what, what that really means once they're released. 
Here's a look at the back plate. It does have a well-built look to it. It doesn't look cheap at all. It looks and feels very lucky. I would just want MSI to know that I wish they would create their 90 series graphics card and their MEG motherboard in white because I have so many people who come up to me and ask me for a high-end MSI build but they want it in white. But moving on, for the few of you that need that longer DisplayPort cable run, the Gaming Trio line has DisplayPort 2.1B for 5080 and 59 cards. Moving on to the brand new platform for MSI GPUs, the Vanguard line. Now, I mentioned in part 1, the launch editions will come with these cool Lucky the Dragon figures. There's 10 different ones, so hey, if you have tens of thousands of dollars, maybe you can collect them all. So, the Vanguard editions look somewhat similar to the gaming trio, but there is that extra RGB flare that runs under the fans and along the sides. And you also have these carbon fiber accents and strategic spots on the card. Also, if you check out here, you can see the little claw or fin looking accents by two of the fans. You'll get Display Power 2.1A on all the Vanguard cards along with the standard of three HDMI 2.1B ports. When I'm done here, I'll put up the Vanguard card side by side with the gaming trio so you guys can see. I honestly don't know which I like better, but full disclosure, I've never really cared much for RGB anyway. Alright, so now let's move over there because I want to show you guys my favorite, which are the Supreme lineup. I actually have a nickname for these cards and it's Megatron because the design language to me reminds me of something that Megatron would transform into. So it's very sleek, but tough, yet sophisticated. Okay, so here you can see an exploded view of a Supreme Liquid version. So I remember seeing this design for the first time at Computex last year, and I thought it was very impressive how they engineered everything together to keep it sleek. I prefer this look right here to the Vanguard because the RGB is just lit up in just the right spot with perfect angular accents and it gives off a more sophisticated vibe compared to the Vanguard. I mean, don't get me wrong, the Vanguard is great if you're going for that more aggressive or gamer look and feel. What do you guys think? Which RGB placement do you guys prefer? Do you guys like the ones on the Supreme more or the ones on the Vanguard more? Let me know in the comments down below. By the way, I mentioned before on the other platforms that the shrouds get slightly bigger as you move up from the 5070 to the 5090. But the thing that's interesting in the Supreme line is that the shrouds and coolers are exactly the same for the 5080 and the 5090. So for the Supreme SOC, the 5080 and the 5090, and I'm just reading this off of the notes that I have, both measure 359 by 150 by 76 millimeters. And you get the same cooler size for the Supreme Liquid SOC as well for both the 5080 and the 5090. And speaking of the Supreme Liquid, here it is in all its glory. I mean, look at this guy. Liquid Cool Megatron. Again, it's the same dimension for the 5080 and the 5090. So from that, you can assume the 5090 will probably run warmer and louder. And I hope you guys had fun. What? Oh, what? There's <laughs> too many of them. <laughs> so that's it for the MSI Boost Tour. I hope you guys had so much fun. Let me know in the comments down below what you guys think. Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe button. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.